Hey everybody, welcome to A Country Life's very first premiere. Now, I think that's redundant because I think premiere means the first one. Anyways, welcome to my premiere. We are going to be getting ready for Thanksgiving and number one on our table at Thanksgiving is cranberry sauce because we're cranberry farmers. So today I am going to share with you guys how I make what I refer to as cranberry sauce. It is going to be the strained variety because I know if you guys look around YouTube or the internet you are going to find hundreds, I tell you, of different recipes for making homemade cranberry sauce. But pretty much 99.9% .9 of those recipes is for making whole berry sauce. And sometimes people don't always want those chunks of cranberries and the skins in the sauce. I like it, Warren likes it, but the kids love it when I make it strained. So there's so many names for this. Some people call it uh, jellied cranberry sauce. Some people call it strained cranberry sauce. In our house we just refer to it as cranberry sauce because I almost always make it strained because like I said that's how the kids like it. This is going to be the most traditional recipe ever because it has three ingredients only. One of them is water and the other two are cranberries and sugar. I just want to let you guys know that with this premiere comes one full hour of me I am live right now in the comments as you guys are watching this video. If you want to ask me anything about cranberries or cranberry farming or cooking with cranberries or how to how to jazz up your cranberry sauce for the holidays or maybe you want to go completely off of that and you want to ask questions about family life and homeschooling, whatever it might be, I will be with you guys for one hour here starting right now. So don't be shy. I, I'm hoping that this is all going to work, that this goes live and people can comment and I can comment back quickly. In order to make cranberry sauce, I have to tell you guys, I do everything uh, big, big, big. So I'm not going to just make one little dish of cranberry sauce. I'm going to be making multiple jars of cranberry sauce. I've got three pots going because I don't like to put all of it in one pot. Sometimes it doesn't boil up just quite right. Um, if you have experience making jelly or jam, you know that you're only supposed to make one recipe in a kettle at a time. Otherwise, it doesn't quite um, always gel properly. I have over here all of my cranberries. These are cranberries that I've had frozen. They work just as well as fresh cranberries. It's just going to take a little bit more time, obviously, to bring these to a boil than if I was using fresh cranberries because these are a lot colder. I have a multitude of measuring containers here for water, sugar, and cranberries. I have my sugar here and yep, I still have my pots over here. So my version of cranberry sauce, this very, very traditional, simple, simple method is very easy to remember because it is just a one, one, four ratio. So that means one cup of water, one cup of sugar and four cups of cranberries. And I'm gonna put two of those recipes into one pot. So I'm gonna do, if we can do our math, two cups of water, two cups of sugar, and eight cups of cranberries all into each one of these pots. I have the two cups of sugar and water in all three of these kettles what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these on to almost high and now it's time to just let this come to a boil and boil for five minutes that's gonna kind of reduce down the the water in here a little bit and make the sugar already start to turn into a little bit of a syrup and you guys are in what is that it's gonna be cranberry sauce yes. Maria how cold are you Frozen. You are frozen? Let me feel you. Oh, your your hands are much colder than your feet, yes. What were you guys doing outside? Just stuff. We were playing things that we normally do that okay. last winter. <laughs> It's time to set the timer for five minutes. Whoa, steamy, steamy. 
So like I said, when it comes to the cranberry sauce, I like to do it in a big way. Joseph, shh, 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 because I really don't want to have to drag everything out to make it again sometime soon. And we like to eat a lot of it. So the five minutes while the, wa the sugar water is boiling, that five minutes is just the right amount of time. Whoopsies is right. That's just the right, of right amount of time to get this whole contraption put together. This is called a back to basics food mill. And this, wait till you guys see, it's gonna be pretty cool how this works. set up. Whoops, I hear the timer. Okay, Peter. The containers we need is the large silver bowl that's kind of flattish, and then we need like a cookie, um, like a small cake pan. Okay, this will work fine too. That'll work fine. But we need the big silver one. Okay, so in go the eight cups. Can I hold this? Can I hold well, you know what? I'm going to let Maria, because I forgot to let her. And Maria, you're going to pour yours. Can you pour yours back there? Back there. Can you get them in there? Get them all inside. Hot. It's hot, I know. Come on, Peter. Pour it in. Don't burn yourself, buddy. Excellent. All right, so I'm just going to give this a stir, and then we're going to let this come to just a Can real gentle. Shh, shh. We're going to let this come to a real gentle boil. Can I stir this. Yep, stir it up. And we're going to let it gently boil for 15 minutes. So similar to making other jellies and jams, you have to cook this uh, sugar solution and the fruit on, until you kind of release that pectin and cook it down a little bit until everything is nice and soft and it starts to kind of like sheet off of the uh, off of the spoon. Because what you're really going for is to have a nice firm sauce. At least that's what I'm always going for is a firm sauce because I want to be able to put it in a jar and then be able to, if I wanted to, be able to dump the whole thing out as a formed gelled sauce like onto a plate if I wanted to. Similar to what you might do with the jellied sauce that you buy in a can from the grocery store. You know how you take the top off and then you kind of and use the can opener to pop the bottom that releases the pressure and then it kind of like and then you can slice it at least that's how my grandmother always did it and anyways that is kind of a, a typical way to do it. Yes excellent okay so one of them is starting to have a low boil. Mom right around the edges. Mom. This one is just starting to have a little bit of a boil around the edges and that's what we're looking for. I'm gonna let it boil a little bit more before I set my timer. Yes, Peter. Um, when I was mixing this, I heard a cranberry pop. What do we got going over here? I was gonna play you a song. But now that it's for the world? Now there's a camera on me, I don't know. <laughs> So Sam is learning a new song here. He is learning, tell us. I'm learning A Million Dreams from the movie The Greatest Showman. That is Maria's favorite song. Yeah, Maria's favorite song. And uh, my friend was just over uh, this weekend and he taught me how to do the uh, chords on the guitar and on the piano. So um, I printed off the, uh, like the notes and uh, lyrics and I'm learn how to play and I think I got pretty good. All right, why don't you give us a little tune? It's been a while since we've given everyone a little taste of Sam on the guitar. That cranberry pop. Mm. Okay. Oh, now, that was ready? The cranberry. 
from the very beginning, okay? All right, guys, I'm cutting in just to let you guys know that I just set the timer for 15 minutes, and all the cranberries are going to cook away at a low boil for 15 minutes. All right, take it away, Sam. Ooh, they are popping like crazy. timer just went off and you can see just how thick this is already getting that is just what you want it to look like even though all these had exactly the same amount in this is the biggest kettle so you can tell that this one get got a little thicker because there's more surface area for um, you know for the evaporation So this is just the coolest thing. I've dumped all of the cranberry sauce into the hopper up here. This is the kids' favorite thing in the world to do. Um, so you guys just kind of calm Can down. So what's going to happen is that the cranberry sauce is going to go down through this little opening in the center here. It's going to go through this portion. There's actually a spiral in there. That's going to keep it kind of augering forward. This is the berry screen, and so this is going to take out all the skins and seeds. And the skins and seeds are going to pop out over here. All of the good 
uh, pulp and everything is going to come down here and that's going to be cranberry sauce. So Peter, why don't you have at it? Start cranking away. Maria's going to push. Push gently. Because we, we don't want to splash, remember? It's super, super hot. It's coming out. All the cranberry sauce. Here's what's coming out here and here's what's coming out here. Exactly. And let's see if we can get a nice close up over there for you guys. And I'm there it is. Now, as I crank away on my last kettle here of the cranberry sauce, I just wanted to share with you guys that you don't have to make cranberry sauce in this huge, huge quantity like I'm doing. I, I'm not sure how many uh, pint jars this is gonna yield, but quite a few. If your guest list is smaller, and or cranberries just isn't really your thing, and but you just kind of feel like you still need to have them on the Thanksgiving dinner table, you can do this with just, just one kind of like batch, right? So just a, a kettle, the size that I was using, just uh, one cup of water, one cup of sugar, four cups of cranberries, bring that all to a boil for, you know, a soft boil for 15 minutes. And then you can either run it through a strainer like I have here, but if you don't have something like that and you still want the strained cranberry sauce, which I highly recommend because it is just super, super good, especially for people who might not, who think that they don't like cranberries, it, that, it seems like they actually like a strained sauce. So anyways, you just need some sort of colander that's like a sieve style. Now my bigger one I broke because I pushed so much cranberry sauce through it, but something like this, a little bit bigger would work well. And then just a big wooden spoon and you just set this over a bowl and you can just press it right through here. It takes a little bit more time, but it works perfectly if you're just making a small batch. But for us, cranberry sauce isn't just a Thanksgiving meal food. We tend to eat cranberry sauce uh, throughout the year. Warren actually likes to put it on his um, English muffins. He likes to put it on a bagel or toast. He'll eat it for breakfast with his eggs. It's also really, really good if you smear it onto like a turkey sandwich or something, just like lunch meat turkey. That's really yummy. So I'm just giving this a quick stir so that I can make sure that the liquid portion and then the pulpy portion is, um, you know, nicely combined. Now comes the fun part. You can do something super traditional and just pour it into a glass mason jar. A wide mouth one does work best in case you want to like pour it over and then lay it on its side, you know, like on a plate and slice it or something like that. Or you can just spoon it right out of there. That's how we almost always eat it. You can also pour it into some kind of bowl like this, something that you could then invert onto a plate. Um, you know, you just run some hot water over this and it'll kind of bloop. The hot water will help to break that suction and then it'll just like uh, lay nicely onto a plate or you can even use something like this. This is a jello mold that I have. Just pour it right into here and I'm actually going to do one like that today. Cranberries have a lot of natural pectin, so this is actually going to firm up over the next day or two. So if you are thinking of making cranberry sauce for your Thanksgiving table, you're going to want to be sure to do that a day or two in advance just to make sure that it has plenty of time to set up. Now, just like any good cooking show, I actually already have one ready here for you. I'm going to show you guys how you can, if you want to, I'll run this under hot water.
in our house, we tend to like cranberry sauce a little bit on the tart side. And so if you don't think that you like it quite so tart, definitely feel free to add more sugar. All the way up to two cups of sugar is totally fine. That's actually originally the amount that would go with four cups of cranberries. So feel free to use anything all the way up to two cups, depending on the level of sweetness that you guys like. So once all the sauce is jarred up, you really have a couple options. You can just pop it in the fridge like this and it'll last up to definitely up to a whole month in the in the refrigerator just the way it is you see I do have some of these lids uh, for mason jars they're just like these white screw on lids and then just obviously the just the standard lids or if you want it to be shelf stable you can water bath can this now I'm not going to go into that tonight uh, because these I'm just going to all put in the fridge and we'll eat these up over the course of the next month but you could water bath it five why did I lose all my lighting? That's really bizarre. Okay, that was really weird. But you could water bath it. Five minutes is all is all it takes, and then it's shelf stable for up to a year. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Remember that I am live in the comments for the first hour after this video goes live. I hope that you guys are able to use this information to help you have the best Thanksgiving ever. If you know of someone who is hosting Thanksgiving or wants to or needs to make some cranberry sauce, why not share this so that they can hop on over here and see how to make cranberry sauce homemade right here where cranberries are growing. All right, so that's going to wrap things up here for tonight. I'm glad to have you guys all along, and we'll catch you next time with a brand new video. Bye-bye.